In this lecture, we will discuss about the energy band diagram of the PN junction in equilibrium. For that, what I will do is, I will revise what is the energy band diagram of a semiconductor and intrinsic semiconductor. Then we will see what is the energy band diagram of a P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor. And when we finally form a PN junction, so what will happen to this energy band diagram structure, right? So we know when you are drawing the energy band diagram of a semiconductor or any metal or semiconductor or uh, insulator, so we'll have uh, two bands. The top band is called conduction band and the lower energy bands are called valence band, right? And we know generally valence band is completely filled with the electrons and the conduction band is empty, right? And uh, the bottom of the conduction band is called EC and the top of the valence band is called EV. And the, the energy gap between the conduction band and valence band is called energy gap EG. And we know this energy gap for silicon is equal to 1.21 electron volt. Remember, whenever we are finding the energy gaps, that is in terms of E, the uh, units will be electron volts. It is at T is equal to 0 degree Kelvin. If it is a uh, silicon and it is at a room temperature, that is at 3 equal to 300 degree Kelvin. So this will be 1.1 electron volt. Similarly, this EG for germanium is 0.78 electron volt at T is equal to 0 Kelvin. And it is 0.72 electron volt at room temperature, that is 300 degree Kelvin. Right? So this is the energy band diagram of a semiconductor. Now, so we have to add one more energy level that is called a Fermi level to indicate that the either the number of electrons are more or the number of holes are more. For that we have seen the Fermi Dirac distribution function that is f of e is equal to 1 by 1 plus e power e minus e f by k t. So this e f is called the Fermi level. Suppose if the energy level is equal to the Fermi level, we can say the probability of occupancy of an electron is 50%, right? So to indicate that, so we have to indicate the Fermi level. So when I take an intrinsic semiconductor, so the same energy band, this is EC, this is EV. Now we know in intrinsic semiconductor, the number of free electrons in conduction band is equal to the number of holes in the valence band. So to indicate that, the Fermi level will be in the middle of the energy gap. So this indicates EFI. So EF means Fermi level, I stands for intrinsic semiconductor. So whenever the Fermi level is in the middle of the energy gap, we can say the number of free electrons in the conduction band is equal to the number of holes in the valence band. Right? So this is about the intrinsic semiconductor. Suppose if we dope or something or if we in uh, increase the temperature, so the electron hole pairs are increasing. So in that case, suppose electrons are increasing, this Fermi level moves closer to the conduction band. If the holes are increasing, this Fermi level moves closer to the balance band. So that will happen in the either P-type semiconductor or N-type semiconductor. Right? So now we will see for P-type and N-type semiconductor. So when we are drawing the p-type semiconductor, now I am not drawing that uh, total connection band. I am just drawing the this uh, EC line, right? The bottom of the connection band and the uh, top of the valence band. We know in p-type semiconductor the majority carriers are holes. That means the number of holes are more compared to the electrons, right? So that's why the Fermi level, Fermi level moves closer to the valence band. So it is a p-type semiconductor, that's why I have given the names as ECP. So EC means the lower of, I mean bottom of the connection band, that is EC, P stands for p-type semiconductor. So this is the intrinsic Fermi level. If it is a p-type, so I have given like this. Now the Fermi level in p-type, so EFP. So Fermi level is moves, I mean moves closer to the valence band. That means the number of holes are more in p-type. EVP is the top of the valence band in p-type semiconductor. Similarly, for n-type, we know the number of electrons are majority carriers or we can say the number of electrons are more compared to the holes. That's why the Fermi level moves closer to the conduction band. So ECN, EFN, EIN, EVN. So in n-type semiconductor, that's why the subscripts are n, right? And this is the 
intrinsic Fermi level in n type semiconductor that is EIN. So now suppose if I want to find the number of holes present in the p type semiconductor, how to find? If we know the energy gap between this EFP and EVP, then we can find the number of holes present in the p type semiconductor, right? That is the hole concentration P is equal to the NV, the energy density states in the valence band into E power minus of E F P that is Fermi level in P type semiconductor minus the E V P by K T right so this is equation 1 now if we replace this N V by intrinsic carrier concentration so we have to replace this E V P by intrinsic Fermi level so that is also one more equation that is P is equal to N I into E power minus of E F P minus E I P by K T that is if we know the the gap between this EIP and EFP then also we can find the whole concentration if we know the intrinsic carrier concentration right this is the equation 2 so this is the two equations to find the number of holes present in the P type semiconductor similarly for N type semiconductor so we need this energy gap between ECN and EFN so the number of electrons present in the N type semiconductor is equal to NC energy density states in the conduction band into e power minus of e c n minus e f n by k t this is equation one for electrons if we replace this n c by intrinsic uh, carrier concentration this will become n i into e power minus of e i n minus e f n by k t this is the equation two for electrons right so remember these uh, equations because when we form a p-n junction we have to find the built-in potential so there these equations are useful right now we'll see when we form a p-n junction what will happen so okay. now when we form a p-n junction so what will happen there exists a non-uniform concentration of carriers that is the holes are more in p-type semiconductor electrons are more in a n-type semiconductor so whenever there exists a non-uniform concentration diffusion will take place that's why the holes will diffuse from p-type to n-type semiconductor and the electrons will diffuse from n-type to p-type semiconductor and when they're diffusing they will leave behind ions if a hole is diffusing from p to n it will leave behind one negative ion so many holes are diffusing means so many number of negative ions forming across a junction if an electron is moving from n side to p side it will leave behind one positive ion so many number of electrons means so many number of positive ions across this junction right so this region is called the depletion region or space charge region or transition region right and the width of this depletion region is w and due to this negative charge and positive charge across the junction an internal electric field is generated that electric field is directed towards from n type to p side because always remember electric field will direct from positive charge to negative charge right and uh, we have seen when an el electric field is generated so the potential difference also will be developed and we have seen these potential differences suppose this is the xn naught that is a uh, penetration into the n side and this is minus xp naught penetration into the p side and we have seen this v naught is the v of xn naught minus v of minus xp naught this is the potential difference across this junction or we can say across this depletion region and finally the diffusion of holes and electrons will be stopped by this internal electric field or we can say the junction potential or built-in potential so that's why in equilibrium there is no current flows initially there is a diffusion but later that diffusion current will be cancelled by the drift current that is due to this internal electric field that we have seen already right now the same explanation we can give using the energy band diagram for that I will take the energy band diagram of p-type and n-type semiconductor and we know if the holes are more we can say the Fermi level is very closer to the valence band if the number of electrons are more we can say the Fermi level is closer to the conduction band now when you are forming the p-n junction 
the holes are diffusing from P to N side. That is, in P side, the number of holes are reducing. Now, how to represent that reduction of holes? The Fermi level is move away from the valence band or it is moving toward intrinsic Fermi level. Similarly, in N side, the electrons are reducing because due to the diffusion. That means this Fermi level is move away from the conduction band or it is moving towards intrinsic Fermi level. Now if you observe carefully the number of holes which are diffusing from P side to N side and the number of electrons which are diffusing from N side to P side should be equal. Then only we can say the negative charge at P side will be equal to the positive charge at N side. That's why we have written like Q minus magnitude is equal to Q plus S or no. So when that will happen? when the same number of electrons and holes will diffuse. Now if how to represent that one? So very simple. So in P side holes are reducing. So this EFP is moving away from the valence band and this uh, EFN is moving away from the conduction band. So when the both are equal, so these two Fermi levels will be in the same position, right? So this is coming down, this is coming up. Now how to represent that one is something like this. So this is at P side and this is at N side. So just now we have seen the Fermi level is moving away from the valence band in P type and the Fermi level is moving away from the conduction band in the N type. But after some time they will be in the same position because same number of holes and same number of electrons will diffuse. Right? Now even though the holes are reducing in P type, the Fermi level is closer to the valence band only. In N type the Fermi level is closer to the conduction band only right now so what is the actual representation is so simple so we have to align these two Fermi levels so what we are doing is we are bringing this P type energy band diagram is up or we can say this uh, N type energy band diagram is down then these two Fermi level will be in align or in the same level right so that is why these two Fermi levels are aligned now when we are bringing down or up, so there is some inclination is forming. So that inclination or the, that height is called potential barrier or barrier potential. Or we can say simply the holes are diffusing from P side to N side. They are leaving behind the negative charge. And when the electrons are moving from N side to P side, they will uh, leave behind the positive charges. Now that barrier potential or electrostatic potential can be represented by something like this. So here, so this is V of X N naught and this is V of minus of X P naught and this height is called the built in potential V naught or junction potential. But we know in uh, energy levels generally uh, measured in electron volts. So that's why this barrier potential will be measured in Q times of V naught. When I multiply with Q, so this will become in electron volts, right? If I want to find the volts, so we have to divide with the charge Q, that's it. Then only we will get the in volts, right? So this barrier potential, so here the same uh, height will be there, here also same height. So this is also we can say Q times of V naught. And if you observe carefully, this height plus this height is also we can say the barrier potential so that is how we can write is q v naught is nothing but e i p minus e f p at p side plus e f n minus e i n at the n side so when we add these two energy levels we will get the barrier potential also right so I hope it is clear. So similarly, we can write this QV naught as QV naught is equal to the energy gap between this ECP and ECN. So ECP minus ECN will give the Q times of V naught that is barrier potential. Or in this uh, valence band also we can write QV naught is equal to EVP minus EVN. Right? So any formula we can use to find the barrier potential, right? Now we should uh, give a proof that why we got QV naught is equal to this one or QV naught is equal to ECP minus 
ECN or EVP minus EVN. For that, what I will do is, when we find the uh, the built-in potential, we have found two equations. That is, the whole concentration P side is equal to whole concentration in N side into E power V naught by VT. Or the same expression we can write in terms of Pn E power V naught by Vt can be written as Kt by Q. So Kt, this is Q. So Qv naught by Kt. This is the whole concentration in P side. Similarly, the electron concentration is equal to, I mean N side is equal to electron concentration in P side into E power Q V naught by Vt. Sorry, Kt. Right? So Q V naught by Kt is okay. I'll write like Nn is equal to Np into E power Q V naught by K into T or simply V naught by Vt. <coughs> now using these two equations we can find those Q V naught etc. Now to find Q V naught, so I have given the uh, these uh, two equations in the starting of the lecture. That is whole concentration is equal to Nv into E power minus R EFP minus Ev by Kt or this one. So I am using these equations. So the whole concentration in P side is equal to the Nv into E power minus of EFP minus EVP by KT. That is the first equation. I need this uh, whole concentration in N side also. So PN is equal to the same NV into E power minus of, if you see here in P N type. So N type means, see, I need holes. So the energy gap between EFN minus EVN will give the whole concentration. So E F N minus E V N by K T. Right? So if I divide these two equations 1 and 2, so I will get the P P is equal to P N type. So P P by P N that is 1 by 2 is equal to so N V N V will be cancelled. So E power minus of E F P minus E V P by kt into if this is going uh, to the numerator it will become e power efn minus evn so this will come out as e power see here minus efp minus efp this is plus efn plus evp minus evn so this is also by kt kt this is pp by pn now if you see here EFP and EFN are at the same level. So, what will happen to EFN minus EFP will be 0. So, this will be E power EVP minus EVN by KT which is PP by PN. So, equation 3. Now, if I compare this equation with this one. So, PP is equal to PP is equal to PN, PN. Same. E power EVP minus EVN by KT here QV naught by KT so from this uh, if I take this is a uh, equation 1 Roman letter so from equation 1 and 3 we can say QV naught is equal to EVP minus EVN yes or no so what is this QV naught EVP minus EVN now if we use the electron concentration in N side and the P side, we can get as QV naught is equal to ECP minus ECN. That you can verify on your own. Right? So this is about the energy band diagram in the PN junction in equilibrium. Now remember, at equilibrium, the Fermi level in P side should be equal to the Fermi level in N side. So in the gate exam, sometimes they may ask the questions based on the energy band diagram. So first they may give energy band diagram. So they may ask what is the height of the barrier or what is the barrier potential or potential barrier etc. Right. So only we have to take the difference between this ECP and ECN or EVP minus EVN or we, we sometimes we have to use this formula also. So this one, this height plus this height will be equal to the QV naught. That is something like this EIP minus EFP plus EFN minus EIN. Right? So, this is about the energy band diagram of the PN junction in equilibrium. Right? Later, we will see in forward bias also and reverse bias also. Right? So, next lecture I will start the uh, PN junction under forward bias condition. Right?